Hi everyone, I've got a short video today on orchestration. One of the best ways to learn orchestration technique is to borrow from those who came before you. In previous videos, I've looked at orchestral textures from Sibelius, Mazorsky, and others to find inspiration when writing and orchestrating your own music. Today, I want to look at a quick excerpt from William Walton's Belshazzar's Feast, a cantata featuring orchestra, choir, organ, baritone singer, and brass bands first performed in 1931. And when I say quick excerpt, I mean it. I'm just looking at four measures here. I've reduced the excerpt down to two staves and to something that's playable on a piano. It's compositionally very simple. The first thing we hear is this powerful G sharp in octaves. Because it's alone in this measure, our ears hear this as an important root or pedal note. A measure later, we hear this chord, which is comprised of an E, a D sharp, and a B. The E and D sharp are positioned a semitone apart, which immediately creates tension, especially when you notice that the entire collection here is a bit harmonically ambiguous. Remember, our ears have already heard the G sharp below, so that plus the B and D sharp would form a G sharp minor triad. But then the E suggests an E major seventh chord in first inversion. I think the ambiguity here definitely contributes to the overall tension. That tension is resolved over the next two measures. When the D sharp is lowered to D natural, forming an E dominant seven chord in first inversion, then in measure four, the G sharps in the bass resolve up to A, and the D natural and B are suspended for a beat before resolving cleanly to an A major triad. Pretty simple overall, but very effective. It's Walton's orchestration, however, that truly gives this moment its power and brilliance. I'll start with the bass notes. To get a forceful orchestral bass register, you need to expand below the bass clef staff. Walton has this G sharp extended across three octaves, starting with brass and winds on the upper octave, alto saxophone or English horn depending on the version, plus two horns. Saxophones were common in the orchestra in the 1930s, not so much anymore. In the middle octave, he has two bassoons, a bass clarinet, and organ. And in the lowest octave, contrabassoon and tuba. These winds and brass instruments, plus organ, all have fortissimo sustains, and here's how that sounds. Walton doubles the octave G-sharps with strings, and perhaps surprisingly, tremolo sol ponticello strings which have an intense, agitated sound. The Sol Ponticello technique emphasizes the higher harmonics, creating a bright intensity, and the tremolo creates suspended motion and additional tension. Here's what the Sol Pont tremolo strings sound like. Putting brass, winds, and strings together, we get an intense, forceful, agitated bass layer to the texture. In the treble register, the three notes are doubled across two octaves. Trumpets and trombones contribute the most here, and one of the most important takeaways, I think, from this excerpt, three trumpets in close proximity doubled exactly one octave below by three trombones. The octave brass configuration between cylindrical brass instruments really creates a powerful sound, and at fortissimo, that will overpower any other instruments present in this range. Walton also has two clarinets in unison on the middle notes of the upper octave, the D sharp moving to D natural, then C sharp. Clarinets add a brightness in this range, and it's important to emphasize the moving notes within this layer. He also has two horns playing these notes that I've outlined in orange. These are the only instruments throughout the entire excerpt that jump from one octave layer to another. Horns aren't quite as powerful as trumpets or trombones, but moving them into the middle of the treble clef staff allows their sound to come out a bit more. Here's how that all sounds. Putting everything together, let's hear a real orchestra this time, because sample libraries don't quite do this moment justice. So that's a very quick analysis of four measures from William Walton's Belshazzar's Feast. I remember years ago hearing this while in school, and this particular moment stood out to me because of the forceful brass, as well as the interesting use of Sol Ponticello tremolo strings. 
I hope you may be able to find inspiration from this moment. Remember, never plagiarize, but you can borrow certain aspects from this, like the brass configuration and the low tremolo sol ponticello strings. That's it for this video. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.